So these are all the bits and pieces for the project. Now I've come across a problem straight away. Um, there's the cutout for this LCD display. So obviously that's got to line up when this goes inside here. But as you can see, the, um, that's never going to line up at the moment because this board is basically too long for the case. Now you think, well how can that possibly be? They must make thousands of these. And if you look very closely at this board here, you can see there's a bit of surplus off the, on the side, on the right hand side there. You can see it underneath perhaps a bit about that score. Whereas obviously that bit has got to come off. Otherwise, we're never going to get that lined up in there. Basically, it's a bit like that. That's how it should go. So that's the first thing I'm going to do then. Trim that excess piece of board off that looks like it should have been snapped off or cleaned up by the uh, production department and hasn't been. So I'll do that and uh, put it in and hopefully screw it all up. So, back to the project. You see these two little bits that literally, quite literally, fell off almost the edges of this circuit board. So they should have just been cleaned off really. And now you can see that this just falls in there quite happily and all lines up. But I haven't actually screwed it up yet. So um, you can see the screw holes aren't quite filled with the screws. So I'm going to put the screws in here. Um, then put these little bits in at the side. I forgot to mention there's actually a, a torch on the side here, which is always a useful thing. Because although I intend to use this for an Arduino power source, you could use this to power your phone, for example, or anything that needs a 5 volt supply. So this is portable, it goes around with you, and uh, you get a torch as an added bonus. Yeah. Can't be bad, can it? Right, let's get on with it. And just before I put the circuit board back, you can see that uh, the on-off switch for the torch is at this end is just sort of being held in by gravity really. So we'll see how well that works when the circuits board's added. And the reflector for the torch just fits over the LED like this. So that pushes up against the side I would imagine and sort of holds itself steady. Um, we'll see when it's uh, all connected up. Right. So the circuit board's been screwed in. As I say these other bits are just sort of hanging in by gravity. I don't know if the camera's picking that sort of rattly sound up. Basically it's the, the sound of the reflector here just rattling a bit and probably this, this switch as well, the on-off switch with the torch. Now there's a much bigger problem actually that I've come up against. Um, the battery packs, which I thought were going to fit that way, but then it appears that uh, I don't think they are. I don't think there's going to be room enough for two because they certainly won't fit that way. I mentioned that these batteries um, have got a protection circuit built into them, which means that it's built into the actual battery itself, either at the top or the bottom, I'm not sure where. But it's, um, it literally is a piece of electronics built into the battery, and it makes these batteries two or three millimetres bigger than they would otherwise be. And as you can see, if I try and put these into here now, well, it's more than just a tight fit. It actually forces forces the plastic case at a, at a nasty angle, which means when we put this, this top bit on, it, it's not going to fit very well at all. So uh, I'm just going to go and get the other pack actually and see if they would fit that way. So here's the other set of batteries and it's blindingly obvious they won't fit that way at all. Which is a shame, they could have made this um, box that tad bigger to allow for batteries that have got that protection circuitry in them. And as I say, this, this way it's just going to be a very, very tight fit. Uh, considering I haven't even connected these batteries up with any kind of wires, um, I'll have a ponder about what to do. In the meantime, let's, let's inspect this uh, circuit board with a bit more detail and just see what's inside it. So the solution I've decided to go with, rather than order different size batteries, that is to say batteries without the protective circuitry inside, is simply to use three and put them that way. After all, you could run this with just one battery, hence I have this one here, exactly the same battery inside it. It's only got one of these inside it uh, with a bit of circuitry. So by having three, you say, well, what's the downside? Well, the downside would be that there's less capacity, it won't last as long. But given that this is for my Arduino projects, I'm not really that bothered. So I'm going to make up a battery pack with three batteries. Have the uh, the fourth one as a spare. 
and um, connect all this up, solder in the, the power that leads and see how it goes. Right, winner! So just before I screw it all back up together again, uh, you can see I've made the battery pack. I put this tape around it actually just to hold the batteries together while I was soldering on the wire across the top and I thought well it seems to hold it pretty securely so I've left the tape on. Um, the only thing I want to do now is uh, put some kind of insulating uh, strip across the top here, either some thick plastic or even thick cardboard would probably do just to make sure that these terminals on the top here have absolutely no chance of touching anything in here. Um, I've had a closer look at uh, this circuit board, so I can get this just uh, zoomed in on, there we are, Ooh, nearly, there we are. Uh, this middle chip is a no-name, let me say, it hasn't got any markings on it at all, there's no way to know what that is. And um, these two, this one here, and this one here, and in fact they're 99268s, power MOSFETs, um, I'm guessing to drive the two USB ports. So two power MOSFETs either side, some no name chip in the middle, a microcontroller I'd imagine of some sort, and protective circuitry all around here. And of course um, this little um, coil here indicates that there's a, uh, a power conversion going on from the 3.7 back up to the 5 out. Now we can see it is actually working, if I just make sure I don't short anything out while I touch things here. Uh, there's the on off switch press that once, oh, then it all springs into life and it says that the the uh, cells are in fact 73% charged, that's good and I think it's a long press if I hold it for a long time that switches it off and if I press it again and hold and that double press well one of these presses, one combination of the presses perhaps it's a quick press switches on the torch. I did have the torch running just a second ago. Right. Oh, well, I'll figure out the combination of presses and uh, show you an example of that. In the meantime, I'm just going to scroll this together, make sure there's no, no problem here with insulation, and use some of that wonderful foam and stuff that came with those batteries to pad all this out so there's no movement at all inside the box. Okay, right, let's finish off. So here it is, just before I uh, connect it together, there's the protective shield now across the top, so nothing's going to short out there. Bit of sponge down the side to hold all this nice and secure, I think it does. Now Banggood suggests putting um, two strips of, of blown foam, as they call it, blown sponge in here. So I'm going to do the same, I'm just going to cut this sponge up into two, put two bits on here, then clamp all this together before it all springs apart on me. So there we are, let's have it, and I still haven't figured out how to turn the torch on, but we'll come to that in just a second. So, here it is, all nicely completed, I put the um, the bezels on here, the little silver bits here, and this side, oh, and there you can see, let me just dim the lights here a bit, there, and you can see that the torch is on, um, to be quite honest, I still can't quite figure out the presses, if you press it, if you press it once, ah, so the torch is on, the output is off at this stage, Press it again, long press maybe. Ah, right, torch is off, this is on. A long press now will turn this off, I'm pretty sure, without the torch coming back on here. There we are, all off. Great, so that's uh, a nice little uh, unit, even though it's only got three batteries in, but to be quite honest, I'd rather have three batteries that are protected against discharge and so on. I know the uh, the electronic circuit in here is, is supposedly going to do all that as well, but belts and braces. It does mean, of course, I'm down 25% on the capacity overall on this uh, unit, which could be an issue if you wanted this to uh, charge your phone three or four times, but... I want it for my Arduino. If I had wanted this for my mobile phone, I probably would have replaced these batteries which, with the protective circuit um, for standard non-protected flat top batteries, which makes them just that two or three millimeters shorter in length, and then they would have fitted in no trouble at all. Okay, that's it then. That is the Banggood self-build DIY power bank. I'm going to charge this up fully and use it in my future projects. And just before we close this little project up, I realise I haven't actually shown it to you charging yet. So here's a standard 
um, phone type charger, it's a micro USB. You plug that into the smallest of the sockets and that springs into life and as you can see it now says 90% so I've had it charging for about or oh, maybe an hour so it's gone up from 78 to 90 um, it charges quite a bit slower than, than this one I mentioned the single cell one but then that's not surprising is it because there's three batteries in there so you'd think it would take about three times as long I've no idea how long it's going to take to actually charge from from flat or as close as flat as you can get all the way up but I'll just keep charging this until it says 100% and then um, use it in the project from then on. Okay, right, that is it now. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Remember, you can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.